Hello everyone and welcome to day one. Actually, it's only one day of theCUBE's live coverage of Alteryx Inspire here at the Venetian in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight Wright. My co-host and analyst, Rob Strecce, will be joining us. He is finishing up at the keynote right now. But I would like to welcome our first guest of the day. He is Jeff Peeler, Managing Director at West Monroe. Thank you so much for joining us thank from you for Minneapolis. Me. Yes, thank you for having me. So why don't you start by telling our viewers a little bit about, about West Monroe, what you do. Yeah. Yes, so uh, West Monroe is a business and technology consulting firm. We have about 2,000 employees headquartered in Chicago, uh, have offices in London and Costa Rica, so a global presence. Um, and when you think about our expertise, we have it across insurance, healthcare, private equity, and manufacturing uh, amongst others. Um, you know, and I think we're uniquely positioned at the intersec intersection of business and technology, which allows us to have an end-to-end -end partnership with our clients to deliver uh, these end-to-end -end solutions. Um, and you need that multidisciplinary and cross-functional approach because let's be honest, technology and data is everywhere in, in business. Um, you know, and I think when you look at uh, our clients, we serve all types of clients, but a lot of our clients are in the middle market. And we find that this breed of client is really focused on near-term value creation opportunity, while also in setting their aspirations on the you know, North Star transformation. And at West Monroe, we are rooted in technology and our, our background came from technology. And so we're able to leverage that and, and deliver bo on both of those with our agile approach from diagnostic to delivery. And you know, it spans across everything from sales enablement or even a cost optimization play. So I understand that you're, you're announcing a new partnership with Alteryx. Would you tell our viewers a little bit more about that? Yeah, so there's actually two partnerships we're very excited about, um, both uh, Databricks and Alteryx, the ones that you just mentioned. Um, and, and we were very selective in this partnership because we wanted to have solutions that could scale and deploy at our clients. Um, and we wanted it because we have clients of all sizes of data, um, all analytical maturity, and they ask us all types of analytical type uh, uh, analytical questions. Um, and so, with Databricks's usage-based platform and Alteryx's no and low-code solution, it's exactly what we were looking for. Um, you know, and not only does it help our clients, we have hundreds of business analysts at West Monroe, and by arming them with Alteryx, it's turned them into what we call resident data scientists. And so they can take any size of data, any type of uh, analytical use case, bring that to the client and, and service our clients in a better way. Um, when I started consulting about 10 years ago, uh, I was told, don't boil the ocean, Jeff. And now I'm pushing all of my teams to boil the ocean because with Alteryx, we can process gigabytes of data in a matter of seconds. And so if you aren't boiling the ocean, like you're doing it wrong. And with Databricks now, we can have all of the data at the fingertips of both technical and non-technical users to be used in a multitude of, of use cases. And it's the right grain of data, it's trusted by the organization, and it's ready to be used by anybody. And like, let me give you an example. Like if I were the VP of sales and I saw a decline of 10%, like I would go to my team and one of two things would happen. Um, they would give me an anecdotal story of, well, this client canceled their order, uh, there was a region specific event that happened, and I'd be left questioning like, is that the truth? Is that the whole story? Or is my and, team lazy? <laughs> exactly, and, and how do I corroborate that? Right. You know, and then the other side is, well, um, you know, I'd go to my team and then they would go to FP&A, FP&A would go to IT, IT would go to this poor data engineer who you know, got this game of telephone, and they would then give it to a business analyst on the sales side. Um, and nine times out of 10, they'd have to re-pull the data because it was either wrong or there's additional data that was needed. And so now with these partnerships and when we deploy it at clients, um, the, that same VP can go to a junior business analyst and ask that question. Fire up Alteryx, pull the data and all the data attributes that are needed from uh, Databricks, create a workflow, segment the data, summarize the data, hit run. And before that VP leaves his or her desk, has an answer already uh, in hand. And this Swiss Army knife of capability has helped us, it's helped our clients, but it's also helped embed competitive advantages at our clients because they can get insights faster, they can you know, identify threats, um, and be quicker to market. 
Um, you know, and so like with these capabilities, at one moment, they could be doing an inventory allocation optimization problem for 40,000 SKUs in thousands of locations. And those same capabilities are then used to identify where should I put my next new store uh, with you know, customer insights, uh, historical performance uh, assessments, competitive intelligence. You know, we just learned about trade area demographics here. You know, so all of those things can be used. And you know, when we were looking at that, there's no other partnerships um, that are better than the combination of Databricks and Altrix today. So earlier in our conversation, you were talking about focusing on both your customers being focused on near-term value, yep. as well as the north star of greater productivity, greater yep. greater uh, profit. So, how what do you see as the biggest opportunities for your clients right now? Yes, um, when we think of the biggest opportunities, it is leveraging the data that they have. Um, and they're sitting on treasure troves of data and not using it. Um, there's time and time again in my career where we hear clients say, well we don't have the data or we don't have good data and it leads to this like circular level of inaction and a roadblock of, oh we don't, we don't have good data, we don't use the data and because we don't use the data there's no reason to fix it. And you know, in my career I've yet to find a client or a data set that doesn't drive meaningful impact on the business when they use it. Um, we worked recently with a uh, sales organization and that they knew they had lots of data, but they, it was a relationship-based sales approach. And so they took this approach of, well, um, you can use the data, but it's not going to tell you anything. And there was a new head of sales who wanted to prove this out. And so they engaged with West Monroe. And they had this belief that uh, a sales rep could only carry a certain number of product lines and the sales reps had to be segmented by the category that they carry. So like you would carry the, the sports product line, I would carry the luxury product lines, et cetera. And, um, and just so I'm clear, this was really because someone had, had invented this in their head. It, was, it wasn't any real, it wasn't based on any numbers or any empirical evidence. Correct, okay. yes. And, and we see this uh, a lot though. You know, organizations that have just set status quo, they don't really test to see what data we have um, or what could we do. And so typically it takes a new leader or an outside consulting firm to kind of help them think through the art of the possible. Um, and, and in this situation, we were able to look at the data and disprove everything that they had believed. And their largest and best sales reps were ones that carried the broadest portfolio um, and the largest number of product lines. And you know, as we mentioned, like it's just people who haven't really challenged the status quo. And part of this was because of COVID, their customers wanted to have a different purchasing experience, um, and you know, and, and they just kind of did business as usual. And so we were able to take this information and transform the way that they went to market. So we could say, sales reps, you, you should carry this product line, this, this is how many you should, uh, product lines you should carry, you can carry sport and luxury and you know, da 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 da, um, and then go to your accounts and say, based off of this, this is how much you could sell. Uh, and these are the accounts that are underpenetrated and there's an opportunity for you, Mr. or Mrs. Salesman, to make more commission. And by doing this, it's not just transforming the business, it's also arming the sales reps with more information. So w with this data that they had, they could see like uh, the end customer who went into their store. Um, and we could use that, that data to say, you know, th your store has this demographic of customers, which looks identical to these other stores. Um, and your store has a different planogram setup or portfolio mix. And so by optimizing it, you can then have your end customer come into your store make a purchase which converts more sales for you, Mr. Customer, and sales rep, you then sell more. And so it's a win-win-win across the board uh, that just wasn't ever like challenged or quoted. And so by doing this, we're able to empower individuals and now with Altrix at, at record speeds. And what you're describing is really not just implementing new ways of using technology and data and analytics, it's really about a mindset shift and change management yes. because it is having someone willing to challenge the status quo yes. and think differently. Can you talk about the ways in which West Monroe has to tackle that that, that mind shift, that, that mindset problem, because I imagine 
describing the the leader who said, "No, this is a this is a relationship game. Yep. It's all about this." When in fact, you could say, "Actually, no. We've got some data that shows otherwise." Yes. I mean, that that's tough to do. Yes, and so usually what you try to find is what we call change champions to kind of help you with that. You know, the other thing that's very successful, um, and th that when I was uh, early in my career, someone said this, and it stuck with us. It's in God we trust. Everyone else bring data, um, <laughs> and with that, it's like look if we have data, that is our foundational truth. Um, and that's what we can then build off of. And so while most of our projects have a qualitative and quantitative approach, like the quantitative and data will set you free. You just have to leverage it and, and use it. So, I mean, what you, you just made a, a brilliant uh, case study of, of how a sales organization could really change. But what, are, what do you think are some of the factors that really contribute to this kind of transformation? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think th th there's multiple, but I, I think the biggest factor is knowing what you're trying to solve. Um, and you have to then have a use case to go after. Um, and so when, when we think about the use cases, it could be everything like I mentioned before about a sales enablement or, or a cost optimization. Um, when we work with some clients, like they may come to us and say, hey Jeff, our, our cost to serve is, is increasing. Um, and they know the problem, they just don't know how to solve it. And in, in one situation, we're working with a distributor, and they know that their costs, the cost buckets, have increased, um, and therefore the cost of service increased. Um, but now what they're looking at is, I don't know why, what the driver was, I don't know how to mitigate that trend, and I don't know what my should be costs after we go through this exercise. Um, and so by aligning towards a use case, we were then able to get them to transform, but more importantly, within a matter of weeks, we could give them a fully costed model, segmented by location, channel, product, et cetera, and use that internal data to benchmark across themselves and externally, um, and get hyper specific on our recommendations. And by doing this, you know, as an example, we could say, the, the location in Seattle has an underutilized fleet. Um, our sales data and, and forecast data, both short-term and long-term plan, don't show an increase of sales, and so we think you can reduce that fleet. And by reducing three vehicles, you save on lease costs, maintenance, insurance, um, it saves a million dollars. And by doing that, you paint the picture that's a tangible value creation opportunity, and by doing also like that level of fidelity, you can then create a laundry list of opportunities uh, that you can draw a line in the sand to say, we're going to tackle these initiatives. Jeff already just told us what we need to do. We need to go re, you know, reduce the um, uh, fleet here. We need to move this location over in Maine. All of these things, and it's a tangible and tactical thing to do. So that value creation opportunity that we just talked about is realistic and now you can go run towards it. And so by having the use case and a tangible target, that's how we get the, the organizations to align and, and move forward. Right, because they understand that there is a, a plan in place and something that needs to be done, and everyone can be then aligned toward a singular goal. Um, I want to go back to the where we started this, about the partnership with Alteryx and also Databricks. Yep. When you are thinking about measuring the ROI of this, these partnerships, what are sort of the factors that you're thinking up, and, and what will be, what will determine whether or not these partnerships are indeed a success. Yeah, I think you know the ROI by definition is a quantitative uh, measure, um, but I think there's also the qualitative part of it. You know, so like there's the ROI that we have uh, on this partnership of of which clients can we go to market together with, but then there's also the ROI that is the customer satisfaction and what our customers see. And so while like you know the partnership helps us, like I talked about before, um, we really look at this as what ROI do we drive to clients and what is that customer satisfaction, and so we can measure our customers' P&Ls or our clients' P&Ls, and if they have an ROI, what that means is they're happy, and they engage West Monroe, and we are continuously engaged on these types of opportunity. And so while there's the customer satisfaction, it really comes back to, you know, which clients can we now have a new tool in our tool belt to go after, but also which ones are re-engaging us because we've been able to prove the opportunity and, and you know, profit improvement from the work that we've done.
So we are here at Alteryx Inspire, and I know you only just got here yesterday, mm -hmm. and we're, we're still early days into yeah. this conference, but I'm curious to hear about the conversations that you're having and what you're most excited about and how they also are, will translate to West Monroe's priorities this year and, and the years to come. Yeah. I, um, I was sitting down for uh, breakfast earlier and I met an individual and I was surprised at the level of the penetration of analytics in some of these small companies. You know, uh, now it, it's not a matter of, you know, sh can we afford it? It's you, you cannot, you can not afford to not afford it. Um, and with, with that, it's like, Analytics is everywhere. And so now, like what I'm most excited to learn about is how do we then partner these analytical use cases to then drive it even faster? You know, so we, you know, we heard in the, the keynote speaker about some of the products coming out. You know, how do we leverage AI and other advanced capabilities to rather than the days that I was talking about to get insights, how do we get that to hours? And how do we auto-program stuff to tell you exactly what you need to know um, that reduces you know, your, your cost to serve your, your customers, but also cost to get insights? And I, last question, I know you are a former triathlete and, and your comment about how analytics are everywhere, data is everywhere, yep. I'm sure you use your own data about your performance to get better and to coach yourself and to improve your time and endurance. Um, do you have any final reflections about how you use it personally, you use data personally and how you are, you, you approach the, these analytical problems that you did in your personal life and your yep. athletic quests <laughs> and you do in your professional life too? Um, so I, uh, I, I'm on Strava. Um, and uh, one of the things that I do is I, in an Excel spreadsheet, you know, I, I know uh, it's very rudimentary, but in an Excel spreadsheet, I write down all of my times in my, in my uh, miles per hour for when I bike. And when I have a bad day, I look at why. <laughs> Why is it a bad day? Was it, you know, there was a headwind in my face? Was it that like my kids, you know, I got three hours of sleep because of my kids? And by doing that, I can then pinpoint what I need to focus on. You know, and, and that helps me, you know, in, in my life. And it, it's really because I learned it by doing this job. It's what are the things that are uh, impacting your performance and tackle that. You know, like I talked about boiling the ocean. We want to boil the ocean to get the insights, but you need to tackle the, the thing that is impacting you the most. And so, like I've learned it from my job and you know, while my, my, my wife would say maybe I work too much, it's something that I've leveraged from my job to help me grow and be a better person and now better athlete too. Excellent, well Jeff, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure having you on theCUBE. Thank you, it's been great, great being here. I'm Rebecca Knight, stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Alteryx Expire. We Inspire. We are coming up right after this. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in technology enterprise, news and analysis.